lovely day today. So Ira. 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 Uncle Phil. Ira. Ira, give me a frame embrace, Ira. Oh. When we decided to do the Mad About You episode with Uncle Phil, and somebody suggested Mel Brooks, you know, everybody said, Mel Brooks isn't going to do this. What are you kidding me? What I've learned since then is all you have to do is call. Most of the time they'll say no. Very often they say yes. Mel couldn't get there fast enough. He loved the idea of it. Oh, my God, working with Mel Brooks. Oh, my God, working with Mel Brooks. So Mel comes to the, the table read. You know, in the, in the life of a half-hour show, the first day is you read, maybe you rehearse a little bit, that night they rewrite, then it's rehearsal, rehearsal, camera blocking day, shoot, over the five days. That's the traditional schedule. So let's say, for the sake of this conversation, because I don't remember exactly, it's a 50-page script, and let's say it will run, uh, running time in the show is 22 minutes, then let's say you, you'll be two minutes over. Okay. So we begin the read. <clears throat> Mel's scene, his big scene, is about eight to ten pages. It should run four or five minutes. He probably stopped talking 18 minutes in in this scene. He literally went wild on these pages and we were convulsing. We were apoplectic with laughter at how funny he was and you, the writers couldn't get stuff down fast enough. At the, end of the, <laughs> at the end of the read, Mel had two notes. His first one was, um, Uncle Phil doesn't say cookie. He says cookie. Okay? And the other one is Uncle Phil needs to wear a hat. <laughs> these were his two notes. Then we start the rehearsal week and it's, Riser can't get through a scene. He cannot get through a scene, nor can Mel stick to the page. Because he's just constantly, you know, you open that little Pandora's box and out comes all the funny. And he's, it's just the, impro, the improv, improvisation and he and Reiner and his whole life comes out in these scenes. Plus he's always finding something funnier for him. Thursday's camera blocking day and Entertainment Tonight comes and Paul wound up on all fours laughing like, like this, tears coming out of his eyes, because Mel is saying things that w w don't, aren't anywhere, and there's not a page where you can find any of this stuff. Come shoot day, oh, and this is, oh, I have a great, another story I'm going to throw in right now in the middle of this with, his, with, with Annie Bancroft. Come shoot day, just before we shoot, I gather the cameraman. I say, okay, look, I know you have all your marks on the floor, and I know you have all your lens sizes. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to make you a promise. Mel's not going to do any of the blocking. He's going to wander. I know it. I don't trust him for a second up there to do what we've rehearsed. So everybody widen out 15 millimeters. And just where he goes, you go. Okay, you, camera A, put the camera in a tight shot on John Panko and stay there. I don't care if Panko's not talking at all. When Riser loses it and Mel wanders off into the wings, I need a cutaway for editing. You stay with Panko, which became famously known as the Panko cutaway. The scene starts, and the moment... Mel enters the scene with, with Panko and Riser there. He walks to where he's never been before. I got it, because I widened out 15 millimeters. Maybe six lines in, Paul's head is in the couch pillows, because he can't stay in the scene. He's weeping. He's laughing so hard. I'm not yelling cut. I got the Panko cutaway. We get to the end of the scene. Now, I got to go back a day. The day before he shot, we called Annie, his wife, Annie Bancroft, and invited her to come. And her response was, eh, you know what? I've seen him. He's not so funny. All right, don't come then. Cut to Friday night, and the audience is in, and uh, they don't know it's going to be Mel, and they don't know it's her, because really, Annie just looks like my Aunt Celia. You know, she just is every woman. She doesn't dress up. She's not glamorous. She's the most beautiful woman in person you've ever seen, but she just fits in with, with us. Um, and so she said what she said. Now comes that night, and he finishes his scene, and there are, people are on their feet screaming, loving him. It's been so funny. It's been such a glorious, you know, eight minutes of his scene. And through the din of them appreciating Mel, you hear Annie's voice cut through, and you hear her saying, Oh, my God, I had no idea he was so funny. <laughs> Isn't that worth a million? She was so nonplussed by how funny he was. She was, she was in, incredulous by it, as opposed to being, well, of course. What? That was a beauty, that moment. That was just great. The, the moment we started rehearsals, that day two, he took me by the hand, true to his note, took me into his trailer, and I thought, uh-oh, this is my first uh-oh. i got to like, do, do something with Mel. 
and he said, how should Uncle Phil wear his, hat, his hair? And he put his hair up like a horn, like this. How about that? Uncle Phil wears hair like that? And he wanted to know which hat and which hair. And he's in. He was in. He was making it better. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, he's, he's just a blast. Dude.